Good morning. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Mike Allman. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning the, their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. In times past, your fathers, down to Tehran, father of Abraham and Nahor, dwelt beyond the river and served other gods. But I brought your father Abraham from the region beyond the river and led him through the entire land of Canaan. I made his descendants numerous and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I assigned the mountain region of Sire in which to settle, while Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron and smote the Egyptians with the prodigies, which I wrought in the, her midst. Afterwards, I led you out of Egypt, and when you reached the sea, the Egyptians pursued your fathers to the Red Sea with chariots and horsemen. Because they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between your people and the Egyptians, upon whom he brought the sea so that it engulfed them. After you witnessed what I did in Egypt, I dwelt and dwelt a long time in the desert. I brought you into the land of the Amorites, and you lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I delivered them into your power. You took possession, possession of their land, and I destroyed them, the two kings of the Amorites before you. Then Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, prepared to war against Israel. He sum summoned Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. On the contrary, he had to bless you, and I saved you from him. Once you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, but I delivered them also into your power. And I sent the hornets ahead of you that drove them, the Amorites, Parasites, Canaanites, Hittites, Ger Gergashites, Hev Hevites, and Jebusites out of your way. It was not your sword or your bow. I gave you a land that you had not tilled and cities that you had not built to dwell in. You have eaten of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His mercy endures forever. His mercy, His mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy, his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever who smote great kings, for his mercy endures forever, 
and slew powerful kings, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy, his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. And made their land a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. The heritage of Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. And freedom for a, and, and freed us from our foes, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy, his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? Jesus said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, if that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. So the combination of the readings this morning leads me to sort of look at these, both of these readings from the perspective of faithfulness. When we talk about marriage and reasons for seeking an annulment for a marriage if if the marriage has failed, it is a fact that you cannot get an annulment simply because someone was unfaithful. You have to actually prove that the person does not have the intention ever to be faithful. So we get this kind of, I don't know, do they still, still sell cliff notes? They did when I was in college. That's how I got through school. But, but the, you, we have the cliff note version of, of all the readings we've been hearing for the last couple of months, right? In that first reading today, God, can, God through Joshua, he, he, and it's in the first person, so Joshua is speaking prophetically. God is saying, I did all of this for you. I did all of this for you. And at the end, it's even, it's even so clear. He says, I gave you land that you had not tilled and cities that you had not built to dwell in. You've eaten of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. In other words, God is saying, I have done everything for you. And in the, in the ears of the people of Israel, I'm sure that there was this realization that they knew that they had not been faithful throughout the whole time. On every instance, there was, a, there was a, an instance of unfaithfulness to that relationship with God. So God didn't annul his covenant simply because they were unfaithful, because in, they, they had probably had the intention, they just didn't have the follow through. It's interesting now when we come to this, the topic of marriage, because there are a few things that require, there are in, three intentions that are required for a marriage to be valid, and if it can be proven later that the, the intentions were never there, then that's what we call an annulment. The first one is, that you have to have the intention to be faithful to one another. Um, If you have to have the intention for for the marriage to be permanent until death, you can't leave that that clause there saying, well, if this happens, then we'll call it off. And a lot of people don't realize that if you have a prenuptial agreement, that's already um, grounds for an annulment because you've already have, you have a, a positive act against 
the, per, the, the spirit of permanence for that marriage. The third one is you have to be open to children, to have children. And if that's and if you never and if you never have the opportunity or have allowed the opportunity for children to be conceived, then it's also invalid. Well, so that I think is what Jesus probably is talking about when he says there are those who were not born with this ability that they had to. He says some are incapable of marriage because they were born so their hearts are not able to. We always think of like some kind of physical impediment, but that's, I, don't th I don't think that's what this is about. I think it's about the intention, the faithfulness that we need to have for others. And it sounds kind of strange, this conversation that he's having with Pharisees who say, well, if, the man, if we have to be faithful, then it, may, it might be better that we not get married at all. So obviously faithfulness was not a, a prime value for the, for the culture at the time. So Jesus is saying something here that is really countercultural. This fidelity is something that we are all called to have in our hearts. Certainly the, int the intention to be faithful, but also to do everything that we can to be faithful to what we have made our commitments to. And that's in particular is our relationship with God. God is faithful. God will not cancel out whatever it is he's called us to do, but we have to follow him. We have to do everything we can to be faithful. Now let us stand. We pray that modern society may rediscover the value of strong families, may build up a culture that respects life in all its stages, and may support traditional marriage. We pray to the Lord. That we may come to appreciate all that God has done for each of us as his dearly beloved bride, giving him our complete faithfulness and grateful devotion. We pray to the Lord. For those who labor under a burden of sorrow or pain, that through the power of loving intercession, they may draw water with joy at the fountain of salvation and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that God may set up with them an everlasting covenant, pardoning and purifying them to be welcomed into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all the intentions that we now include in silence. For these we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be, 
Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free.
Let us pray. May the communion and your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thank you.